Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwantner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of continuing our conversation with Warren Shiver, his managing partner with the Symmetrics Group. Welcome, Warren. Thank you, Gerhard. We talked about sales transformation and specifically about how we need to transform people, process, and technology. So let's start with people. Okay. What is the best way to help people align with the vision of the leader and achieve the objective? Yeah, I think uh, a couple things. I think one, you know, having that clear vision articulated by the leader and continually reinforced not only in his or her messaging, but also in the metrics and incentives of the organization. So really aligning the metrics of how am I compensated or measured as a sales representative, does that align with the vision of where we're trying to go, right? I think that's point number one. I think the second piece is, like you mentioned, those other two components of process and technology, you need to have those reinforce the vision and the change so that I as a sales rep operating uh, you know, in my day-to-day -day activities, the change in the culture that you're trying to drive is reinforced through the things that you're asking me to do, right, in terms of executing a sales process or a conversation with right. my customer. Let's stick with the process. Yeah. We've moved from value selling to solution selling to now challenger selling. Right. But what is the best sales process right now? So this is a consulting answer, but it depends, right? It depends on where you are as a company, how your customers want to buy, and where you're ultimately trying to transform to. So, you know, for example, for the CPG company that we talked about on our last episode, they were trying to get to more of a solution sale, right? So the challenger or a consultative sale really wasn't the ideal end state for that business. Another company we've worked with uh, in the high-tech industry, certainly they are aspiring to be more of a challenger. They need to differentiate themselves, not through their products, but with the way that they sell, right, and their sales team. So equipping the sales teams with that challenger conversation, if you will, and having the things to provoke the customers in terms of business drivers or insights that they can bring that are new to each of their conversations, that's an ideal goal for them. So again, I think it depends on the company and the market that they're trying to target and how those customers buy. So once the process is sort of mapped out, uh, you need technology to execute. How do you adapt technology to the process, or is it the other way around? I, you know, I think, it's, uh, I think it's a little bit of both, right? I think uh, typically you want to use technology to adapt to and to enable your selling process. But I think, you know, given what uh, companies like Salesforce.com and certainly their Force.com options, there are a lot of options now out there that are relatively affordable ways to enable your selling process, your selling tools, right? So I think typically, yes, based on that end state of where you want your process to be, whether it's a solution sell, value selling, or like you said, a challenger sale even, I think the process and the tools are out there and can be custom and tailored to the business to be able to enable that process. So how do you go about picking the right technology? What I've noticed is there's a trend, uh, there's Salesforce or SAP or, or Oracle or Microsoft Dynamics. So there's a basic CRM system. And on top of the system, there are a number of different applications. And typically, companies buy a lead management application, a marketing application, maybe CPQ. Uh, they do compensation management. They uh, do analytics and right. you know there are a lot of different categories in, in sales enablement. So how do you recommend that sales leaders look at that uh, spectrum of solutions and where to put their efforts because there are over 1600 applications out there and it could become overwhelming. Yeah, I think it's, it's all about setting your priorities and picking where you can get the early wins to build adoption and to your point earlier, reinforce the culture of the organization. So trying to implement all of that in one fell swoop, certainly some companies have pulled it off, but it, it is problematic, right? So I think picking where you can have the most success in terms of adoption from the sales teams right out of the gate will typically be allow you to build onto that. And typically we see those as the traditional Salesforce automation around sales process integrating marketing tools and collateral to again enable me as a sales rep in the field as opposed to just a reporting tool and then as you mentioned compensation ability to give the reps the ability to see and update how they're measured is typically a quick win area as well so what are the three most important application ca categories in your mind uh, from a crm perspective right yeah i would say just the the traditional salesforce automation so automating the sales process if you will uh, I would say related to that, the forecasting and pipeline management modules, so getting those dashboards and insights into do we have enough in our funnel, right? Is it moving quickly enough? How, you know, how are we winning and losing deals? Those kind of insights. And then third, I do think it is around the, the metrics and analytics around compensation. I think most reps 
in sales, got into sales because if they're not primarily motivated by results, they're, they're certainly one of their motivators. So giving them the ability to track their progress or their team's progress is probably the third area that I'd focus on. Well, and then we have the issue of alignment. How do we align different departments uh, like sales and marketing right. uh, to work in sync together so they can meet their pipeline goals? Yeah, no, that's right. I think it starts again with metrics. I think aligning the metrics uh, from a marketing perspective and a sales uh, perspective is critical. I also think aligning the communication, so enabling sales to understand marketing's language and vice versa. And then finally, I think I've seen some progressive companies do rotational assignments where they take leaders from sales and put them in marketing and vice versa. And then that gives you, again, a good uh, feel for the other person's position, right? If you're traditionally a salesperson or a marketing person. And one element of a successful culture is that they all speak the same language. Exactly right. Yes. Thank you, Warren. We are going to continue our conversation tomorrow where we drill deeper into the subject of sales transformation. Tune in tomorrow. Mm -hmm.